Right, welcome back to the channel and it is day number two at Goodwood Festival of Speed. <laughs> So here you have the Bugatti Belide with the livery playing homage to the Type 35. Only 40 of these will ever be made, so it's really cool to see one here. And, uh, I love the livery on this, so this is playing homage to the Type 35, and it's their 100th anniversary. I think the uh, navy carbon at the bottom with this like golf kind of colour at the top and the exposed carbon fibre looks so cool. But yeah, these things are ridiculous. Like I said, only 40 of these are going to be made, so to see one is quite a unicorn. So here you have only one of the 99 that are going to be made, and this is the Bugatti Mistral. So this thing still has its 8 litre quad turbo W16 producing 1600 brake horsepower. Right, Rimacker here with this 15 year anniversary Nivera. It's crazy to think that Rimacker. 15 years old already. So this very car does 0 to 100 kilometers an hour or 0 to 62 miles an hour in 1.81 seconds. Imagine that, that is crazy fast. Right, so Zenvo's here with the TSR GT. You have to say I really like the spec on this Zenvo GT. And as you can see, you get a different rear wing with the GT, but I like the white with the blue accents. I have to say, check out these forged carbon wheels. They just look so cool. So this is my first time seeing the Zinger 21C and I have to say the green carbon fibre looks absolutely crazy. The thing that stands out as well, look at the size of them doors, they're absolutely huge. So with the 21C you have the driver up front, central driving position and you can get a passenger in the back. But look at the size of these seals. A real climb to get in. I think the engine bay is so cool in this. A lot of these linkages and things I presume are 3D printed for all the engine mounts and things. But yeah, they're making 80 units. I'm guessing this thing's no slouch. Look, it's done Laguna Seca in 125. Right, this is Gordon Murray's T33 Test Mule, nicknamed Henry. Yeah, as you can see, this was the Test Mule for the T33, all stripped out inside. Yeah. And they put these things on here, so when they do hot and cold weather testing. But uh, yeah, this has probably been absolutely abused. So this is a car we've seen quite a few times. This is obviously Gordon Murray's T50, but the interior for me is so cool. Yeah, this is an absolute work of art. I love the central driving position. And then just look at the engine bay. It's an absolute masterpiece. Obviously that massive fan on the back, producing all that downforce. But uh, yeah, these things sound amazing. I can't wait for this to go up the hill. Gordon Murray's T50S. This is the Nicky Lauda XP2, so this is experimental prototype number two obviously retains that famous central driving position but this is a full-on race car isn't it you know this has got to be fast for it to have the Nicky Lauda name on it for me the best view is the back of this that massive fan hanging over their massive exhaust pipes yeah these things sound ridiculous I can't wait to hear this thing up the hill this is a very popular car it's absolutely swarmed all the time so this is the Koenigsegg CC850 and Unbelievably, Koenigsegg are celebrating their 30th year as well with this. Right, so Koenigsegg have brought down a fully exposed Jesco Absolute. I love the way this is fully exposed carbon fibre. It's an absolute masterpiece. Just look at them wheels. I could stare and look at this thing for hours. And they brought down a matching fully exposed carbon Jesco Attack as well. Full exposed carbon with the fluorescent orange accents. These two side by side is absolutely ridiculous. What would you take? The attack or the absolute? Put in the comments. Do you think this is a good looking car? Because I have to say, I don't. Here we have only one of the two. Fully road legal, converted by Lanzante, Porsche 935. And this car has been fully re repainted by Lanzante in this Marlboro livery. It looks so cool. Imagine driving this thing on the road. Another Lanzante car. This is the 930 Tag Turbo. Have to say, I love that color. And the final Lanzante car is this P1 HDK LM25. Just look at this thing. The HDK stands for High Downforce Kit. It's got the Ueno Clinic sponsor on the side, which is actually a penis clinic in Tokyo. The side profile is my favorite angle of this car. Somehow they've managed to make so such a pretty car looks so aggressive at the same time. Right here on the Maserati stand, they've unveiled the MC20 Lagonda. I have to say, 
the paint combination harks back to the old Maserati race cars. It does look cool on the MC20. And then here you have the MC20 Icona. Again, the livery looks so cool. Harks back to the MC12 race cars. And then talking about MC20s, you've got this 2006 MC20 Corsa. These things are so big when you see them in person. Obviously, as you know, shares a lot of the underpinnings with the Ferrari Enzo, but yeah, cool to see. And then finally, we have the MC20 Celio or convertible or spider. I think the blue paint with the cream leather interior looks so nice. I really like these. Love to get a drive in one of these. But yeah, I liked them as a hard top, but you take the roof off. I think it just gets even better. Right, so there you have another Zinger 21C that we saw over in the pits. And here, they have a completely exposed one. So Zinger are really pushing the design, manufacturing and process of all these 3D aluminium parts. And they've signed a lot of contracts with big manufacturers. So components like this, we will start seeing on things like McLarens and stuff like that. I mean, and you can't deny it, it looks really cool, doesn't it? Just look at the sculpture of that 3D printed aluminium hub. I was, I was just trying to show you the brake hub on the 21C, they've taken one off and put it here. Just look at the sculpture of this thing. It looks so cool. Right, so what happens when you take the best bits of an Agera RS, a CC850 and a Jesco, you end up with this, the Chimera. So they've taken the body from an Agera RS, the engine from a Jesco and the simulated manual gearbox from the CC850. Right, so the rumours are this is a one-off, it's been specially made for the president of the FIA. But just look at the inside, it is absolutely gorgeous. Just imagine driving that. Getting up close, the exposed blue carbon fibre just looks stunning. These things are a true work of art, aren't they? Right, so Alfa Romeo have put their 33 Stradale in a glass box, which makes it difficult to film, but you get the idea. It is such a pretty thing. Unfortunately, only 33 uh, units are going to be made, so seeing another one of them is not going to be that easy. And on the Zenvo stand, this is their new creation. First time seeing one of these. This is the Agil version. Track focus, big rear wing, love the exposed forge pipe and all the suspension on show. So this is the track version, and then they have the Tour, which is uh, more road buyer, softer suspension, yeah, more of a GT car, but they both look absolutely crazy, don't they? I love them both. So for me, I think the Agile version looks absolutely crazy. I just love that massive rear spoiler, and the red really suits it really well, but I mean, I wouldn't say no to either, but that just looks crazy. Imagine taking that on the track, or imagine doing a big, long GT cruise in the Tour. And the interior of these things is absolutely mind-blowing full carbon fiber monocoque chassis and then they seem to have just laced it with leather you're just sitting straight on the carbon fiber but what a place to be and for me the red and the carbon fiber just looks absolutely crazy i think they look so aggressive on the front i love the open wheel well so you can see the wire and then if you kind of peer through you can see the suspension and things like that you can stand and look at this thing for hours so here we have the pagani utopia in a really unusual spec but we just heard it fire up and it sounded absolutely incredible <laughs> And here you have the Pagani Huayra 